Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, The Best Free Advice on How to Break Into Medical Device Sales. My name is Steve Picaro, and over the next 30 to 45 minutes or so, we're going to try to answer some of the questions, share some tips and strategies. I'll show you the program and the process that I use with my clients transitioning and breaking into the medical device field, and then we'll open it up to some questions and answers uh, probably about 35 minutes or so, give everyone an opportunity to ask. Now, what I'm going to do is go over a few housekeeping tips. One is I'm going to show you how to use the chat on the right of the screen. Uh, also, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, if you can't listen and stay on for the whole thing, you'll be able to download it and uh, review it later. And I'll send that link out to you tomorrow. If for some reason we get disconnected and it happens, the technology is not perfect, uh, call right back into the uh, screen. So what I want to do is take a moment and show you how to use the screen. If you take a look at the webinar picture, I just took a, a little bit picture of our screen. One of the things I want to do is just show you on the bottom here, there's a little chat window. It says chat. You can send a message to people right here. If you send that, I'll get a message. And I think I can set it up so everyone sees the, the message and the question as well. Uh, if you want to hide participants, I, you may not be able to see them, but you can click this right here. And down here, you can adjust your audio settings if you're recording. But uh, pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just sit here and watch the webinar. But if you would like to send a question or a message, send it that way, and I'll get a notification flag up here that there's a message waiting, and I'll be sure to have more than happy to answer it as we go into the, the Q&A. Depending on the amount of people that we have in the call, I may uh, be able to turn off the mute function so we can all talk. But occasionally when we have large groups of people, using the chat function is much easier. All right, so with that being said, uh, the next thing I want to do is take a, a moment, give everyone a quick introduction. Again, my name is Steve Picaro. Uh, I'll be running the webinar today. Uh, I run a number of LinkedIn medical device groups, and I think I might have run into you or you may be in my group. But I just want to briefly go over my background to give you an idea why I'm here and how I got here. Uh, I've spent uh, over 20 years in the field selling orthopedic implants, mostly trauma, sp uh, sports medicine, some total joints, biologics, everything from the neck down. I spent five years in the operating room as a technician in the military. I was a Navy corpsman, recruited to work for a company named Synthes, now owned by Depew, part of J&J. &J. And about seven and a half, eight years ago, I, uh, I started a coaching consulting business. I work with a lot of medical device sales professionals and, uh, you know, as the industry started transitioning, I was working with clients, helping them grow their business. And I got a call and they, one day they said, hey, Steve, a few people said, I need to transition. Can we shift gears and develop a transition plan? And at the end of the day, I was able to take some of the, the experience and some of the background and training I've had to help them successfully put a, a sales plan in process to go out there and sell themselves. And we're going to talk a little bit about that going forward. So I've been running the groups on LinkedIn, um, again, seven years or so. Uh, I do a, a LinkedIn call once a month. I'm trying to do this webinar to help people out and uh, let people know there is help out there. And that brings up the other question here, why are we doing the webinar? Over the years, the last four years to be exact, maybe four and a half, I've been doing a program called Get Hired Today where people needed a little bit more than a webinar and they needed a, something a little less than a private one-on-one -on -one coaching session. And the teleclass format allowed people to um, 
I was able to help them with a teleclass. Uh, the webinar here, I'm going to share some of the tips and some of the information I share with my LinkedIn groups. And for a lot of people who are breaking into medical device sales or transitioning, this is the 50,000 foot view. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll be doing a presentation about 30 minutes or so, and then we'll open it up to some Q&A and hopefully answer most of your questions in the time allotted. I think that's about it. So let's jump right in, get things going. Our goal today, very simple. Uh, we're going to go over some of the commonly asked questions. Uh, you have some questions, other people on the call have some questions, and uh, I'll try my best to answer them in the time, again, allotted, uh, again, 50,000 foot view. Uh, we'll, we'll share some, some tips and strategy, things that I've learned uh, over the years working with people. And uh, I have friends in the business. Again, I've been in this business for, for a long time. Uh, I'm not a recruiter, uh, but I do work with a lot of companies and organizations that hire people. And I do work with a lot of people in transition. So I'll share as much as I can. And then... Um, We'll review a transition process and a system. This is uh, the outline for the program I have. Uh, you can do it yourself, but I'm just going to share with you what I've used successfully with other people to give you some ideas on what you can do going forward. And then we'll uh, really, if there's one thing you can leave with from today's webinar slash call, that we know we've done our job. Now uh, we can't, there's no quick fix, there's no magic bullet. So we're gonna do our best to, 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 to share a nugget or a tidbit of information as we go forward. And then the last thought going forward is we don't know what we don't know. And I don't know what you don't know. I don't know what you do know. And there's a lot of information out there. And be no different if I was transitioning to real estate, insurance, uh, IT. So for those of you, <clears throat> excuse me, who are coming from other fields or starting off a sales career, everyone's coming from a different direction. And we're going to try to fill in the gaps and the process of keep an open mind and we're trying to set the foundation for everyone going forward. Uh, and then we'll get to some of the specific things if possible uh, in the time allotted. All right, let's jump right in. So some of the most commonly asked questions. Uh, again, on LinkedIn, it's a wonderful tool. I connect with a lot of people around the country and I get a lot of similar questions and I've kind of grouped them into industry questions. But one of the questions I get a lot What's the best product to sell? Uh, the medical device industry is huge. Anything from a Band-Aid to a million dollar MRI, MRI machine is considered a medical device. That's a really tough question. Uh, if somebody asked me, Steve, can you recommend a restaurant? I'd need a little bit more information before I gave them a recommendation because there's so many options and choices in terms of products to sell. The next question I get is, what about the company? Can you recommend a good company? And this one is a, a slippery slope as well. We all have friends, we have neighbors, roommates, people from school, church, people who say, yeah, they work for this Fortune 1000 company and they're doing great and they love it. And they'll say, Steve, is this a good company for me? Again, I'll use the restaurant analogy if, if, if you don't like Chinese food and I recommend a Chinese restaurant, it's of no benefit to you. If you're a sales professional who doesn't want to call on a certain type of uh, product specialist, clinician, hospital setting, whomever, it'd be hard to really direct you to a company without knowing more about what you're looking for. And that really goes to specialty as well. Uh, when we think about companies or products or specialties, and I, a minute ago I mentioned I spent most of my career in orthopedics. Orthopedics is a pretty big specialty. Um, if we think about total joints, spine, sports medicine, trauma, reconstruction, biologics, podiatry, hand, foot, uh, ankle is in there as well, biologics, tumor, 
there, there's a few other, but just thinking about how big of an industry that is, it's really hard to start wrapping your head around that. Again, common question. And then the other part of that is what other things about the industry don't I know before I can recommend something to you? In terms of, do you want to work for a large company? Do you want to work for a small company? Does it matter? And for some people, it doesn't. And when we think about models, people buy cars, they buy them from a distributor. They don't buy them directly from the manufacturer. In some ways, there are certain medical devices that are sold through distributors, not manufacturers. The other question, uh, we get a lot of uh, recruiters. Uh, are they my friend? Will they help me? Or are they going to prevent me from going forward? And if you're trying to break into medical device sales, recruiters have a certain clientele they're looking for based on the requirements of the company they're recruiting for. So the tough part is, unless you're coming from an industry, and we were talking a few minutes ago about business to business background, uh, having some really good, solid business to business sales experience, selling uh, office equipment, you know, the old Xerox copier, cold calling, going in there, making presentations. Um, a lot of recruiters are told nowadays, and this is what they're running into, is that companies are looking for people with experience within the industry. And because there's such a, a I don't say a glut of talented people out there. If you're transitioning, you have to demonstrate your salesmanship, your ability, your experience to overcome that little bit of a, a, a challenge as well, or some type of, uh, you know, obstacle in, in terms of going forward. So for the most part, recruiters may not look at you and they may not want to communicate with you because you may not be on their radar screen. Doesn't mean you don't have a, a lot of experience. They just, they have to bring back what their uh, company who's paying. And unfortunately the recruiter doesn't work for you. The recruiter works for the company that's paying them. Uh, they have to bring back exactly what they're looking for. Uh, the other thing that you'll see out there, there are some certification programs, the, um, uh, National Association of uh, Medical Sales Professionals and, and National, yeah, NASRM type of program. Uh, there are a couple programs out there that will teach you some basic uh, anatomy, physiology. Uh, they'll talk to you about documentation in the hospital and some certain basic minimum information. And again, recruiters may use that in terms of um, trying to educate you in terms of the industry. Uh, the challenge is that certificate, I believe it's less than $300, does not really open the door as much as people would want it to open the door. It'd be great if all you had to do was get a certificate and people would, would hire you. If it was that easy, everybody would be doing, one, uh, doing it and I'd be selling one as well. But the challenge is every company still has to train you in their proprietary hardware, their product, their service, and the anatomy that goes with it. Um, there is a company out there, Medical Sales College out there, that is a very extensive, uh, intensive, and expensive program. Again, for the right person, it can train you and give you some information, but you still have to go out there and have the basic sales skills and experience that the company is looking for uh, going forward. I know, again, high level program, but these are some of the basic industry questions that I get on a regular basis. Uh, the other thing is resume challenges. You know, I, I understand about the industry. Let's talk about the resume. How come my resume is not getting noticed? And that happens where people will start applying online for some of these jobs. And they're saying, Steve, I'm not getting, people aren't calling me back. I'm not sure it's getting looked at. And again, it's slightly different today because of the technology where people are screening your resume for keywords and certain things that they're looking for. But they, um, sometimes the resume, again, if the recruiter is not looking for what you have, 
uh, they may not even look at it. So you might not even show up on their radar. The other thing is if you contemplate, and a lot of people talk about having a different resume for different jobs, and that's fine too. For most people, having one good resume is hard enough. Coming up with multiple resumes, that's a little bit of a challenge. But um, that would work. When we talk about resumes, I like the idea of having a targeted specific resume for a company, an industry, and it's geared directly for the field you're, you're going for. And we'll talk a little bit more about that going forward. Uh, the next part is technical jargon. And what I mean by that is if you're writing a resume and you're coming from an industry where you're using a lot of technical jargon, and it happens sometimes with people from the pharmaceutical world who come into medical devices. It happens sometimes from real estate, banking, IT, and I've worked with people in a wide variety of, of industries. Uh, telling somebody that you're a, a morning uh, superstar may not mean anything to the medical device industry. So sometimes we have to get rid of the technical jargon in your resume and be very clear and at the end of the day it's helping people connect the dots and we have to step back and realize that the people who are reading our resume don't understand the industry we're coming from and vice versa and that's one of the challenges going forward uh, the other question that comes up should i hire a resume writer and there are a lot of good resume writers out there and for certain jobs and professions i would say Go for it. If writing is something you don't do on a regular basis or you really want to take your story and be able to articulate it, a professional resume writer can certainly help you. However, at the end of the day, if you're a salesman who's getting hired to sell, your resume can be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're not, at least in the medical device, if you're going into medical device sales, if you're middle management and you're going into a managerial job, and you need to go in there and talk about the money you save, the time you save, the team you built, and you really need to, to puff up that resume, yeah, a resume writer may be worth it, but they can be costly, it can take time, and at the end of the day, there's still no guarantee that you're gonna get the job based on your resume. Your resume's only function is to get you the interview, not the job. So again, that's a chicken and the egg. Uh, one of the other things um, that I, I've seen people, and again, I do a LinkedIn welcome call every month, and people will ask me, well, how close does my LinkedIn profile have to be to my resume? Well, the funny thing is your resume, uh, you're telling people this is my list of achievements and my successes, and then they may get your resume and look you up on LinkedIn, and it's totally 180 degrees and it doesn't support some of the things you say you're doing. And again, people, it's like advertising. They have 30 seconds. If they look at your profile and it's not congruent, it may raise some flags. So at the end of the day, and again, there's a lot of different people out there, different experts who talk about, and again, what's an expert? I don't know. It, it can, seems to be evolving on a regular basis, but I think your LinkedIn profile and your resume have to be congruent. And if your resume is not up to spec and you're not happy with that, is your LinkedIn profile up to spec? And again, this is where you have to get a lot of these things in alignment when you go out there marketing yourself. Uh, the other big challenge with the resume is sometimes sales professionals will submit a resume, but it's the wrong target. It may not be the right product for them might not be the wrong com company or the culture. So what happens is, even though you're reading a job description and you, you know in your mind that you can do it, the company may be looking for a professional, somebody who's, who goes out there and throughout their career, they can go out there and sell this product to their decision maker. Again, Hunter, versus a farmer versus a consultative sales model. So you may be able to adapt, but that company may have a little bit more stringent requirements. And we'll talk about that going forward. So again, people submit resumes, it's either not getting noticed and it's usually the wrong target. 
so it's not resonating with them and uh, it, the people get frustrated. The next part, and again, I'm breaking this down into transition and network challenges that I've run into is how do I get in front of the right people? Um, sometimes it's a hiring manager, sometimes it's an HR person, sometimes you may need to network with somebody behind the scenes because a lot of jobs out there are still not coming up on the jobs board, right? 80 to 85% of the jobs are filled before they even show up. So are you getting in front of the right person? By the time you read about it, it's possible that they've already started the interviewing process. Uh, the other part is, is a lot of people have great resumes. They say, Steve, I'm getting great, great hits on my resume. I'll go in for the interview but I'm not able to close it. I'm not able to go in there with confidence and display my salesmanship and, and, and show them how my experience and training can help their company. And that's a common one. People have problems with their resume or they're not comfortable closing the interview, especially if they're coming from another industry. Uh, the other thing is how do you build your sales team? And this is, when I say a virtual sales team, when you're out there networking, friends, family, colleagues, roommates, coworkers, and I get, again, we're on LinkedIn, we're all networking. Hey, Steve, if you run it in anything in the Northeast that will fit my resume, can you, can you help me? Well, you know what? I, that's really hard. If I don't know exactly what you're looking for, the company, the type of product, the culture, the, who you're calling on, it's really hard to help you get a job. So education, you're helping your sales team, your virtual sales team be the eyes and ears. You wanna build your pipeline. And sometimes people don't do a good job. Sending me a resume tells me where you're coming from, not where you're going. And it's really hard for people to connect the dots. And that's, that's a challenge right there. The other thing that uh, as much as we love technology, social media can be overwhelming. Some people do a lot of networking on LinkedIn. Some people use Twitter. Some people use uh, YouTube. A lot of people have their websites and all of this takes time. And if you're not only trying to develop your sales skills or transition and learn the industry, now you have to learn how to get in front of the people and get your message out there uh, and make sure all your marketing is in alignment going forward. Slightly different than the way we had to do it a few years ago with uh, putting your, your resume on monster.com because that was really the only way where to go, only place to go. Now you have a lot of ways to get in front of people. Uh, the other thing that I, again, run into is not having a plan, a system, or a process to follow. Um, you know, hey, I'm going to go on the job boards. I'm going to submit some resumes. I'm going to network and talk to a few people, take it from there. And that's fine. That's, that's a plan. But it probably needs to be a little bit sharper. And you need to go from using the shotgun effect to a laser. The truth is, the more focused and targeted your plan is, the more effective you're gonna be going forward. And sometimes we don't have a plan because we think we can go out there and do it, and that's the way we've been taught. And for some people, if they're, if they're still working, uh, they have a family, they have kids, life gets in the way. And if you're transitioning, um, how do you make the commitment of time? It's time is money and, and you want to get in there and touch it once and make sure that you have a, a system that's going to help you. It really goes back to sharpening your, your axe or your saw. So when you use it, it's ready to go. So time is at a premium. Life gets in the way. Your job gets in the way. And if you don't have a direction, you may feel like you're spinning in circles trying to figure out where am I going? So these are some of the most common challenges we run into. What I wanna do is take a few minutes and talk about the high level tips and strategies that I think will help you when you talk about jump starting and 
kind of putting things in motion. I've written a few blog posts on this, and uh, I'm going to start right from the top. Number one, think of yourself as a product. At the end of the day, what is your value proposition? If I picked up and I had to move to the, I'm in Connecticut now, but if I had to pick up and move out to the West Coast and go to San Francisco, and I said, okay, San Francisco, here I am, I'm looking for a job, I would have to think about what's the best way to get myself out there. And this is slightly different for a sales professional. If you're only used to selling the product, you never had to do the market research. You never had to do the marketing. You didn't have to write the material or any of the other things that, that have gone into developing a product. So for some people, this is a little bit of a challenge. Even though as a sales professional, you may do a needs analysis, you may have to take a little bit deeper dive. If I go to San Francisco and I say, hey, what value can I bring to a company in San Francisco with my experience, my training, and my background? What are my features and benefits? What do I specialize in? What am I not good in because I want to make sure I stay away from that? How would I start marketing my services? At this point in your career, this is where you have to start thinking about your value proposition. Why do people hire, hire us? And I've heard a lot of people say, hey, well, I'm, I'm a good team builder and I have excellent communication skills. Well, you know what? That's the minimum. If you're going to play, and we'll use sports as an analogy, if you're going to play baseball, you have to know how to run and throw the ball and hit. That's the minimum. But what brings you up to that next level? And this is, takes a little bit more time. And again, I recommend that you do some of this due diligence first. And I'll, I'll show you uh, the process that I, that I work with clients to give you an idea why it's so important. If you're thinking yourself as a product, the value to the organization, are you a closer? Do you go out there and you, you're able to get in front of C-level executives and close these million-dollar deals? Do you go out there and manage accounts? Are you able to go out there and turn around territories? Are you able to go out there? And again, I spent a lot of my time in, in surgery. Uh, are you able to go out there as a consultative sales professional and provide service to the product? The end of the day, it's great if you can do a little bit of everything, and you may have to, but people want to hire you to do one or two things, and that's truly the secret to success. You don't see many professional athletes who play football, baseball, and hockey. You don't see many musicians playing, uh, you know, rock and, and opera. They, they specialize. And that's usually how people do this. So you have to truly think about why is an organization hiring you? Your salesmanship, your communication, your time management, your business acumen. There's a wide variety of skill sets that you bring to that company. The next thing is, do you have a target? And this is very important. Once you think of yourself as a product and you say, yeah, I'm I'm able to go out there and turn around territories. And we'll use the sports analogy here. For those of you who have children, or if you don't have children, at one point in your life, you, you were a child, and you may have said to your mom or dad at some point, mom, dad, I want to play an instrument or I want to play a sport. And you had to pick one, or you might have tried a few until you settled on one. You may play a couple sports because they're on different seasons, but for most people, they picked a direction and a target, and it really goes the same way with, with salesmen or sales professionals. And again, I'm going to use sports as an analogy. If you've been playing professional baseball for five or 10 years, and one day you wake up and you say, I want to go play football and you walked over to the stadium and you say, hey, guys, I'm a professional athlete just like you. And the coach says, great, where have you been playing? Oh, I've been playing baseball. That football coach is going to say, you're right, you are a professional athlete, but a different skill set, different ability. You have the same drive, the same determination. What can you do? How can I fit you in? Show me what you have. And there are athletes that transition 
from one sport to another. And a good example is some of the place kickers in football come from a soccer background because they are used to kicking a ball. That's a perfect example of playing one sport and transitioning to another. So if you're thinking about the medical device industry and you're thinking about taking your sales background, one of the things you want to do is make a list, your, your value to the organization, what you bring, your skill set, and say, what is the best specialty, i.e. orthopedics, general surgery, could be capital equipment, it could be electronic records, again, a wide variety of medical sales. And not only that, if I am going to play football, what position am I going to play? Again, it's a really big question. And the more you start focusing and honing in, the easier it's going to be for you to get the message out. And again, this is a process. There is a, a plan, and, but it doesn't happen overnight. So you have to really do some, some due diligence work. The other part uh, that's important here, once you start developing this this system here is what's the industry language and culture you need to know and if you're going into an industry going back to, to that first slide or second slide we don't know what we don't know what's some of the industry language i need to know what's the culture and again if you're playing baseball and you're moving over to football that's pretty similar but think about a professional bowler or a professional golfer all of a sudden they want to play center for the NBA or be the star quarterback on a, on a football team. That's a big shift, a lot of different things. So once you pick a direction, and again, it's not may not be where you end up, but you need to, to focus on one direction, you want to start reading about the industry and learning as much as you can in a specific uh, specialty orthopedics, again, general surgery, spine, uh, OBGYN, whatever, whatever specialty. And again, I don't know what's best for you, but part of the process. Another thing I would recommend about salesmanship, going back to your company, if you're coming from a company, and a lot of companies invest a lot of money and time and effort and energy teaching you to sell their product. I can't walk in to, to any company out there who's selling to a, a, a highly educated market like a physician or a hospital and not believe that they're going to spend time, days, weeks, sometimes even months training you on their product. Well, one of the things that happens as, as you're transitioning, especially into a new industry, we have to learn to sell ourselves. And a lot of salespeople say, oh, yeah, I can sell myself. But that's that's slightly different when you're building credibility with somebody and you're building a relationship. Knowing your features and benefits, knowing what environment that you function well in, knowing what your manager needs for you and what your manager needs to do to help you to be successful, knowing who is a good prospect for you. Again, are you the hunter? closer, consultative salesperson, and, and who do you sell better to? You know, for some people, do you want to sell to the captain of the ship, the engineer on the ship? Do you, do you want to sell to the cruise director? There's a lot of things that go into the sales role, but you have to know how to sell yourself. What are the objections that you're going to come into? You may not have industry experience. You may not have sold a tangible or an intangible product. You may not have the industry information about the hospital or healthcare. Not only do you have to overcome those objections, you have to be able to weave the story on how your background training, your experience, and everything you've done up to this point in your life is going to help you do the right job for that company. Again, someone's hiring you because they want you to hit the ground running and grow their business. So learning to sell yourself is an investment, not just the skill set, but everything else that goes in there. And sometimes that's a little hard sometimes to look in the mirror and realize that, hmm, maybe I, I haven't done that. All right, let me get to this next slide. A little bit of a 
hiccup in the in the system. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, just bear with me. The system is frozen. It does not want to move forward. Technology is a wonderful thing. Hmm. All right, so we may have to, um, here we go. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> the other thing that I would uh, suggest in terms of, of key tips, having another set of eyes, stepping back, looking at your marketing, because right now you're marketing yourself. And that may include putting your resume out there. You may have to create a 30, 60, 90 day plan for an industry that you've never been in. You may have to put together a brag book or a professional portfolio to document your successes. And you have to get that stuff up on your, your website. Your website may be your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook profile, or there are people who actually have their own websites that they use as a, uh, a dynamic um, uh, website to talk about who, they're, who they are and what they can do for them. So stepping back and going from sales to marketing, they are in the same continuum, but they're at different ends of the spectrum. And we have to make sure that all our marketing and our messaging is clear when we get it out there to the people who want to do that. LinkedIn is a great tool, but like any great tools and technology, you have to learn how to use it. Uh, social media is here to stay. Um, Facebook and LinkedIn, they're two different sides of the same coin. One's a, a personal social media and one's more of a professional. But at the end of the day, they do the same thing. It allows you to build and maintain relationships. And as sales professionals, that's what we excel in. So aligning your marketing is key and making sure it's all on the same page. Hmm. All right, bear with me while I get a quick drink. Getting a little dry. We're going to take some questions in a little while. Boy, this system is not happy. Whatever I'm doing, it is not happy. All right. Aligning your marketing, right? Everyone can see that. Now... Bear with me, please. I apologize for the. Hmm. All right, here it is. Uh, the next thing you want to do is create, create your personalized transition plan. And I'm going to show you what I've done um, that that would be helpful going forward. Again, there isn't a, a quick fix or a magic bullet, but putting together a plan, and this is really what outplacement companies do uh, for salespeople and managers and a lot of people, is that they put together a, a process. And this is no different than if you had to go out and sell a product in your territory, you would put together a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And that's really what you wanna do for you in your transition. But part of that is understanding a little bit more about your product. So I'll show you what I have. And you can take notes or I'll send out the, the, um, the slideshow, the presentation uh, as a download too uh, with the recording. And you can use this. And everything I'm showing you, you can do on your own. Uh, even though this is my program, you, you, can, you can definitely do this. So you want to learn the ins and outs of the industry. And my program's a five week program. Uh, that's why I have this set up for five weeks. You can do it and, and 
five weeks is laying the foundation, but you want to know the ins and out of the industry. And again, because I don't know what you don't know, uh, that means different things to different people. So you want to pick a direction and go there. Uh, you want to focus on your strengths and accomplishments, business, salesmanship, relationship, territory management, and then you have to take your accomplishments, your achievements, and emphasize those while minimizing your, your uh, obstacles. You want to choose the best company, product, and specialty for you. And what do I mean by that? There are a lot of people out there who make a good living and are very happy selling Band-Aids. And there's a lot of people who are very happy and successful selling total needs. And there are people out there that sell, like I mentioned, those million dollar MRI machines and everything in between. But just because it's a good fit for me doesn't mean it's a good fit for you. And this is part of the challenge when I've talked to my friends who are on the hiring side. When they say, Steve, people come in and I'll ask them why this job's a good fit. They can't tell me other than. I know I can do it. That's not a good fit. That's not a good way to let people know that it's a good fit for you. Uh, the other thing you want to do is create a brag book. Now, not every industry has this, but this is basically a portfolio. If you were an artist, you would bring uh, a book, some type of binder that has all your artwork in it. Designers have it. Engineers have it. A lot of people have a portfolio. But this was designed by the pharmaceutical world many years ago, where people would come in and it would highlight their education, their training, their sales awards, their quota awards, personal references. I've worked with clients who've had patents in there and all types of things in there. But your brag book becomes your sales literature. Again, think of yourself as a product. Uh, the next thing you want to be able to do is come up with a way to overcome lack of, of medical sales experience if you're coming from outside the industry. Again, everyone has an objection. Every, every sales process, there's always an objection. But as good salespeople, we have to come up with a way to answer that. And it has to be genuine and sincere, and it has to come from you. And it's slightly different from for everybody on the call on the webinar because you all have a different type of experience. The other thing you want to do is develop your recipe for success. Wherever you go, there are going to be questions that ask you, hey, now that you showed me your, your successes, your achievements, how did you do it? And can you reproduce it? Your 30, 60, 90 day plan is a bona fide method for you to show them how you achieve your success. Now, you're not going to have access to proprietary information. We know that. The company knows that. But the idea is when you get hired for a job and you say, I can grow your business 20% this quarter and 25% next quarter, they want to know if you have a process and a system that can do that. And this is where your 30, 60, 90 day plan comes in. And again, it's going to be focused for the industry and for you. And again, a lot of commonality, but it has to be your way. And if you don't have a way, uh, you probably do. You just may not have documented that. The other thing you have to do is taking all these things that you've worked on, they're supporting your resume. Your resume is going to open the door for you and get you the interview. And because we're all in sales, the resume has to focus on your achievements. It has to be simple, easy to read, clear. And it has to focus on what your highlights are, your strengths are. And again, I'll go back to sports analogy. If you're reading the sports stats, it's very easy to see who the winners are. You can look at their numbers. How many wins, how many losses, you know, the batting average, the strikeouts, whatever, the touchdowns, the, the, goal, uh, the, the uh, yards that they rushed. It's very clear. When a three-year-old and an 83-year-old can look at the sports page and find out who the winners are, you want your resume to be the same thing. Now, your resume is going to include and allude to all of these things, your 30, 69 day plan, your brag book, the, 
the company, the product, the strengths, you're going to take all of this and weave your story in the resume. And what happens is sometimes people want to do their resume first without doing their homework. And it's really hard because you don't have the literature to support it or the process. And then once you have your resume and you're out there marketing and you get the interview, you want to be able to present all of this stuff in such a way that you can close the interview. You can demonstrate your salesmanship, find out what they're looking for in their territory because everybody has a specific need in their territory. And then you have to close the, the interview. A lot of people get the interview, but they don't close it. They wait for the hiring manager to say, um, yeah, I think I want to hire you. They want you to close them. You're a salesperson. But you have to get all these things together, and they all have to work together. Because at the end of the day, you have to start marketing this, and you have to prepare for the interview process. And again, I know it sounds like a lot of things to focus on, and you're probably doing a lot of these, but they have to be in alignment and they have to have a plan. So it's uh, getting to the top of the hour. What I'd like to do is take a few questions. Uh, I'm going to, we can use the chat or I'm going to take, um, uh, take everyone off mute if if we don't have a lot of people, uh, if they want to ask the question, that's fine. I do have examples of some of this stuff in more detail if we need it. Um, I'm more than happy to go into it. Let me see if I can get there. All right. So let's talk about questions and let me figure out how to do this. All right. Can anyone hear me? Hey, Steve. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Go for it, buddy. You're up. All right. Um, I just, uh, it's something that's kind of new to me. Your 30, 60, 90 day plan. Um, I know that would obviously be a plan for how you would achieve, you know, sales in the specific territory for that specific product. But like exactly how would you formulate a plan? Would you just write up like a Word document about exactly what you would do? Or, you know, like, can you just elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, well, it could be a Word document. It could be a spreadsheet. At the end of the day, it, 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 it can be a, something that you want to demonstrate. You want to have something on paper that you can show somebody. So it might be something as simple as a Word document. It could be a spreadsheet. It could be a, a PowerPoint graphic. But you want to have enough detail so people will see. And again, you can Google. 30, 60, 90 day plans, and you'll get a, a ton of examples. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's something interesting um, that, you know, no one's ever told me before. Excellent. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I guess if no one else can ask any questions, I had another uh, really just general question for you. All right. Well, uh, hold on. Well, hold on for a minute, Ben. Let's see if, let's give someone else a, a chance. Okay. Yeah. Perfect, Steve. Um, before yeah. you jump in. Now, I know some people are driving because uh, sometimes people listen to the webinars while they're driving. So I don't expect you to type. If you don't want to talk on the phone, you can send me uh, a, a quick question on the chat, on the, um, on the, um, through the chat mode. All right, one question here. All right, so I just got a question on, on a process on the plan what happens with the plan if it's not a hundred percent do i need to follow the plan a hundred percent okay the answer is no um, the plan gives you guidance think of it as a bumper uh, on the on the road you have bumper rails left and right lanes to keep you there ideally you want to have a direction you want to have a target you want to have a focus we talked about some of the key spots here again this is a high level some people may need to practice their interviewing skills some pre people may need to spend more time on their brag book because they don't have a lot to, or they have too much and they're not really sure what they need to put in it. Uh, some people don't know what they don't know about the industry. So you may look at your sales experience and say, I don't know what product or device or service will allow me to match that skill set up. 
but you need to have something to start, a starting point, and maybe an idea where you want to go. And you can modify it once you have that. All right, other questions? All right, Bennett, go for it. Ben? Oh. oh, sorry about that. Ben, did I, are you there? Hey, oh, it's Krishna. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. here. All right, go for it. Uh, yeah, I guess, um, you know, this webinar was extremely helpful to me. Um, just in terms of, you know, breaking through definitely with networking and exactly how to formulate, um, you know, a successful strategy for breaking in. Um, but I'm just, you know, kind of concerned about my background. I've only been out of school for five months now. Do you think that that would be something that's at a disadvantage for me? Or, you know, I am a salesperson. I can play that up. Um, so, I mean, would you recommend me starting off looking for a medical device job now or trying to get more experience. I do have, you know, um, some business to business experience and that in that sense, um, you know, I could formulate a decent enough brag book, I think, and make a good enough plan. But would you just recommend getting like a full year of full-time employment before trying to go into the medical device field? Or, you know, is this something that I can start off just because I've had intern a numerous amounts of internships and sales experience as it is? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough question. There is no easy answer for that. There are companies out there who their minimum requirement is that you have two years of medical device sales experience because of the nature of their product. There are other companies, and again, this goes back to I have no idea what you're looking for. And there are companies that might say, hey, we want someone coming up who has fresh ideas, who has a fresh perspective. Uh, I don't know what your, your financial requirements are. So there are a lot of ways for you to break in. Um, the end of the day, if, the more sales experience you can get, the better off you're going to be, no doubt about it. I, again, I don't know if you're working now, but if you're working in sales and you want to transition, work on your plan and, and start filling in the gaps. And, and start looking. If you're not working now, well, go out there. I mean, I, I, there's no guarantee in anything. I mean, again, I don't know your, your situation. So uh, the answer is you have nothing to lose by going for it. And once you get out there, you're going to learn with feedback. You'll get feedback from people you talk to. Absolutely. All right, Steve. Well, thank you for everything. This is very helpful. All right. Excellent. All right. Anything else before we wrap it up? I know we're running a uh, top of the hour. I have a few minutes. I'm going to uh, stop the recording to let those people who have to go uh, go. And then what I'll do is um, we'll have this recording available to send out. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. And I also have the next teleclass for people who are breaking into medical device sales coming up next week. If that's something you're interested in, I'll send you the information. You can take a look at it as well. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.